Hello children today I am going to tell you some wonderful stories about child devotees who are they they are children who have prayed hard to gods and have even seen them in person isn't that wonderful all right i am going to start off with the story of markandeya long long ago there was a beautiful mountain under which there was a huge village in this village lived many sages and there was one sage named mrikandu now sage mrikandu and his wife had no children they were very very sad one day Sage Mrikandu's wife went up to her husband and said, "Oh God, why don't you bless us with a child? I wish the God gives us at least one child." Sage Mrikandu said, "Don't worry, my dear. If we pray hard to Lord Shiva, I am sure he will bless us with a child." So from that day. Sage Mrikandu and his wife started praying very very hard which is also known as penance they started chanting the shiva mantra om namah shivaya om namah shivaya they went on and on and on suddenly there was brilliant light in the sky so dazzling so wonderful both sage mrikandu and his wife could see nothing then they cleared their eyes and they saw and who should it be none other than lord shiva and his wife parvati who came sitting on nandi ah shiva and parvati looked so luminous they were smiling their eyes were twinkling there was lovely smell around them both sage mrigandu and his wife felt so happy they fell on to their feet and thanked them tears rolled down their eyes then lord shiva said well my children I know you have been praying very hard. Now is the time to ask for a boon from me. I shall grant it. Then both of them looked at each other and looked at Lord Shiva and Parvati and said, "O oh Lord, you know what we want, but yet you want it from our very mouth. Please bless us with a child certainly i shall grant you this but there is a condition what is it o oh lord don't worry i want to give you a choice do you want a good child who will live for a short while or do you want a naughty child who is going to live for long The first one will be useful to everyone but the second may not be of use to anyone the choice is yours said lord shiva certainly sage mrikandu and his wife who are such good people immediately said we would love to have a good son with a good character useful to the society lord shiva blessed them and disappear years passed and soon a beautiful son was born and they named him markandeya not to mention at a very very young age markandeya mastered the vedas and the scriptures his popularity grew far and wide everybody 
appreciated his intelligence his good behavior he became an example everybody would tell their children look at mark india at this young age he is so knowledgeable he is so intelligent you too will have to learn from him so on it went but whenever elderly people came home the parents made it a point that markandeya takes their blessings for the simple reason everybody would bless him with a long life one day the sapta rishis seven rishis came over to sage mrikandu's ashram and they were very happy to see markandeya he once again took their blessings falling at their feet all of them said long live markandeya <laughs> who's that sage narada came in narayana narayana <laughs> Saptarishi <laughs> you've made a mistake <laughs> don't you know that markandeya will live only for 16 years <laughs> so your blessings are not going to happen <laughs> so laughing sage narada left the rishi swear what it how can the blessings not come true so they ran to none other than brahma they went to him and pleaded brahma deva oh brahma deva please could you rewrite the fate of markandeya please the serene brahma said i am sorry i do not have the power to rewrite the boon of lord shiva but I can give you one hint. Ask him to pray stronger and stronger to Lord Shiva. Markandeya as you all know was already a very staunch follower of Lord Shiva uttering his mantra. He started doing it even more as he was nearing 16. The 16th birthday arrived. <laughs> Down came the Yamathudas the servers of Yama the lord of death they came in to take away Markandeya but Markandeya's staunch belief in Shiva feared them to even come closer they were disappointed and they ran back to yama and said yama deva who we cannot do anything to markandeya he is so strong his prayers are so strong we can't go anywhere near him what what do you say a 16 year old child and you cannot go near him i shall go myself so yama sat on his vahana the buffalo and came down <laughs> thundering down the clouds yama comes down with a noose in his hand Markandeya bathes in the river applies the sacred ash the vibhuti on his forehead and goes for prayers <laughs> Markandeya looks at Yama he does not recognize him and he very humbly asks who are you lord and what is the reason for your visit <laughs> i am yama the lord of death i come to take your life <laughs> markandeya realizes that 
time has come for him to leave this earth he thought to himself i am not worried about death but my parents they love me so much i have to do something who else but lord shiva can save me so he started crying aloud om namah shivaya chandrashekara please help me please save me he runs as fast as he could and hugs the shivalinga he hugs it really tight yama swings his nose Lord Shiva appears from the linga and kicks Yama on his chest. Down he falls and the noose falls too. Lord Shiva and Parvati hug Markandeya and say, "Don't worry, my child. We will protect you now and forever." nobody can ever touch our devotees all the sages saptarishis and mrikandu arrive they sing the praises of lord shiva and they say please pardon yamadeva he was only doing his duty shiva instructs yama don't you ever trouble our devotees go away and yamadeva leaves lord shiva and parvati then bless markandeya with eternal life from then on markandeya remained 16 and continued his prayers and became sage markandeya isn't it wonderful how lord shiva himself came down to save his devotee markandeya all right let's go on to the next story this is the story of upamanyu who is another devotee of lord shiva he is the son of sage vyagrapada One day Upamanyu goes to his relative's house. Come Upamanyu, how are you? Oh very fine, thank you. Come along. Why don't you have some payasa? Which is lovely sweet milk and rice porridge. He tasted it. Mmm, it is so good, he said. Then he came back singing and dancing to his house amma do you know they gave me payasam in uncle's house oh really did you like it she asked yes amma it was so delicious and lovely can you make some payasam for me please amma he requested his mother his mother felt very sad because she neither had rice nor milk to make payasam but upamanyu was too young to tell him that she did not have all this so she quickly mixed some flour and sugar and gave it to him saying it was payasam thank you amma and started drinking it <laughs> this is not Paisa mama that was so delicious and tasty this tastes mm, not very nice you didn't make paisa then his mother did not want to speak lies so she took him on her lap and said upamanyu to make good paisa you need milk and rice we do not have cattle to get milk from so you see it is difficult for people like us 
to make delicious paisa is that so amma then tell me how else can we get it is there some way we can get cattle and rice and sugar could you please tell me amma he asked his mother thought for a while and said yes my dear there is one possibility ishwara maheshwara maheshwara ishwara who is it amma tell me more about this person oh how can i describe this person he is no ordinary person like you and me he is a wonderful person who lives in the kailash amongst snow capped mountains he doesn't shiver in the cold he wears a beautiful tiger skin dress he has long knotted hair tied up into a little bundle on top of his head from which pours the holy ganga his eyes are calm and wonderful he has a blue neck and he is ever so smiling and do you know he has three eyes his third eye opens when he wants to destroy evil and in his hand he holds a trishul a trident and a beautiful snake adorns his neck little upamanyu listened and looked at his mother in wonder he said oh i want to see him where does he live please tell me amma i want to go and meet him upamanyu's mother smiled and said well the only way to see him is through prayers you will have to pray with a lot of faith keep on praying hard so that he will come before you and maybe you can ask him for the milk that you want and he will give it to you yes he will surely give you thank you amma and he takes the blessing of his mother and goes into meditation now this little child had only milk 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 in his mind and nothing more so he started praying om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya he went on and on and on and on but you know many rakshasas lived there too and they said hey look at this little boy let us go and disturb him so they came down and started saying hoo ha he he ha ha hoo hoo they started disturbing him but upamanyu was so strong in meditation he said nothing would disturb because he wanted milk he said om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya he continued his prayer as he was praying his little voice traveled through the skies and reached lord shiva days went past and his mind was filled with lord shiva he wanted to see him he wanted to feel him he wanted to smell him oh the thought was wonderful now shiva decided let me go and play with this little boy lord shiva always loved to play little tricks with the children so lord shiva comes down in the form of lord indra who is the god of indraloka he comes down and he said excuse me hello hello then he opens his eyes and he says who are you what do you want i am lord indra i have been listening to you you've been praying very hard to lord shiva what can i do for you can i help you no 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 i don't want any help from you i don't even know you i want to see only lord shiva 
Thank you very much. You, you please go away. Shiva smiled but did not give up. He said, You see my little boy, so many days you've been praying for Shiva and he never came. Oh, he's not going to come. You're going to be disappointed. Now, this thought irritated Upamanyu. He was very angry and he said, Please sir, please don't make me angry. Please go away from here. I will speak only to Lord Shiva and I will ask him whatever I want. Please go away. Don't disturb me. Now, Shiva said that was enough of playing and showed his true self. Upamanyu was so delighted to see Lord Shiva. So happy. He could not believe his eyes that he was seeing the form that his mother had described right in front of his eyes. He clapped his hands and he was so happy he started laughing. He said, thank you, I am seeing you. Oh, he was so delighted. Then he said, well my child, what do you want? He said, I want you. Lord Shiva smiles and says, I know my boy, you started all this for milk and I shall give you milk. The little boy said, Never mind, when I have you, I don't want milk. It's so wonderful to see you. Shiva, as he knew this had started for milk, called Parvati and Parvati came down with a beautiful golden bowl full of amritam, sweet nectar and gave it to Upamanyu. Upamanyu had it and got all the knowledge in the world and became such a bright and wonderful child. Now that he had realized the godliness, he went to his mother and said, Now I will have to leave to the Himalayas to go and meditate. And he had many followers. Something very interesting I am going to tell you. Do you know Lord Krishna received his Siva Diksha from Upamanyu? Now children, do you realize with love, concentration and devotion, you can surely see, feel and speak to God. Children, we listen to two child devotees of Lord Shiva. Now we are going to listen to two more stories of child devotees of Lord Vishnu. Alright, there is a very famous nursery rhyme all of you know. Twinkle, twinkle little star. I am going to tell you about how a little boy became the head star of a huge galaxy, a huge group of stars. Alright, this is the story of Dhruva. Long, long ago, there lived a king, Uttanapada. Now, he had two wives, Suniti and Suruchi. Suniti's son was Dhruva and Suruchi's son was Uttama. One day, Uttanapada called Dhruva. Come my child, come, sit on my lap. Let's have a little chat. So Dhruva was feeling very happy and he was chatting with his father. What are you doing there? Stormed in Suruchi. How dare you keep Suniti's son on your lap and not my son? Dhruva, that's no place for you. Go away to your mother. The lap is meant for my son Uttama and not for you. Go away right away. Dhruva was scared. He did not understand what was happening. He quickly ran to his mother with tears rolling. He said, Mama, why did Chinama scold me? She says that I cannot sit in Pa's lap. Why is that? You think I am not going to have a place in this kingdom? Why, Amma? Then Suniti felt sad, but he was too young to understand all this. So she said, Well, my child, all of us have a place in this world. All of us are important in some way or the other. No, 
Dhruva was not convinced. No, Amma, I have to have a special place in this world. Tell me, what should I do to get it? Suniti smiled and said, If you are very particular, then all that you can do is pray to Lord Vishnu. All right, would you go now and play? So the thought of Lord Vishnu came into the little boy's mind and said, Amma just told me that I have to pray, but how do I go about it? So he wanders and he meets Narada. Narayana, Narayana. He had heard stories about Narada. So he went to him and said, Could you please tell me, how can I meet Lord Vishnu? Oh, it's so simple my child, said Narada. Just chant this mantra. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Come on, repeat. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nice and strong. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Come on, my child, repeat. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Why are you feeling scared? Nice and loudly. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. He went on and on and Narada slowly moved away. Vishnu heard this mystic chant. Oh, he was so thrilled to hear this little voice. He was so happy. He came down and touched this little boy on his cheek with his conch. Dhruva opened his eyes. He seemed to be full of knowledge. He felt a difference. He looked at Lord Vishnu in great admiration. He fell speechless. Lord Vishnu asked him, What do you want, my child? Nothing, came the reply at once. I know that you wanted a place, an important position in this world. Dhruva said, Maybe, but now I really don't want anything. I have had the best thing in my life. I have seen you. What more? I don't want anything more. But Vishnu appreciated this thought and said, But my child, you have been praying very hard to get a position. I shall make you the chief of a constellation, chief of a galaxy of stars. You shall have a bright spot in the sky above and all will see you distinctly in the dark sky. Dhruva was so happy. He runs home and tells his mother everything and takes her blessings to leave. Suruchi feels terrible about having scolded the little boy, rushes and says, Please pardon me, my young one. You have been blessed by the presence of Lord Vishnu. You have seen him. But then Dhruva thanks his Chinama. He says, Thank you so much, Chinama. It was because of you that I wanted a position. It was because of you that I started praying. It was because of you I realized Lord Vishnu. Thank you so much, Chinama. And he leaves. He turned to be the wonderful star, Dhruva. So you see children, determination and willpower with a lot of devotion can make you realize God. There is a very interesting story about a child devotee, Prahalad, who was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. Would you like to listen to that story? Here we go. There were two demon brothers, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakasipu. Both of them were very troublesome. They always troubled and chased all the good people. Hiranyakasipu, look there in that ashram. They seem to be conducting some kind of a puja. 
Shall we go and chase them? Good idea. Come on, let's go. Both the brothers ran to the ashram and scared them out. <laughs> we are going to take you apart. <laughs> we are going to kick all of you. Run away from here, you silly beings. So saying, they chased the good people, the sages. Now they were so upset that these good sages ran to Vaikundam to meet Lord Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu, Mahavishnu, please save us. Look at these two demon brothers, Hiranyakaspu and Hiranyaksha. They are giving us a lot of trouble. Please save us. Can't you do something about them? Mahavishnu looked at them and said, Don't worry, my children. I am waiting for the appropriate time, the right time to kill the two demon brothers. Don't worry. Be patient. One day, Hiranyaksha was so bored, he decided to do something different. Rolled the earth and tucked it under his arms. <laughs> Poor Bhumata was so suffocated. She runs to Vishnu and pleads, Please do something and save the earth. Vishnu takes the form of Varahan, the wild boar. He first goes and saves the earth and holds it in the right position with his tusk-like teeth and keeps it spinning. Now the right time has come to wage war against Ranyaksha. And so there is a fierce battle fought between the two. And finally Mahavishnu beheads Hiranyaksha with his Sudarshan Chakra. And then Lord Mahavishnu returns to Vaikuntha. This does not stop here. Hiranyakasipu, his brother, was very, very upset. He said, Who is this Mahavishnu? How dare he kills my brother? I shall go and take revenge on him. But he knew that Mahavishnu was very powerful as he had killed his brother who was very strong. So he knew that if only he could do penance to Lord Brahma, he would get something in return. So he goes away to the forest and meditates to Lord Brahma. Meanwhile, Hiranyakasipu's wife is carrying a baby. Indira, the lord of Indralokam, is disturbed by Hiranyakasipu's prayers because he knew that he would turn even more powerful. So he rushes down to the forest and tries to disturb Hiranyakasipu. But in vain, nothing happens. So he says, Let me take away his wife. He comes to take away Hiranyakasipu's wife. Narayana, Narayana, Sage Narada intervenes. Please wait. Don't do anything to that lady. She carries a Vishnu Bhakt, a devotee of Vishnu within her. Please don't do any harm. And so Indra leaves her and returns. Now Narada takes Hiranyakasipu's wife to his ashram. Oh, the ashram was filled with the ambience of Vishnu. Vishnu mantram all over. The prayers, the beautiful songs, the lovely chants were all there in the air. The child from within the mother had already turned a Vishnu Bhak. He had already turned a devotee. He was listening to the beautiful verses of Vishnu's praise and a beautiful baby boy was born. Now time had come for Hiranyakasipu's penance to get over. Brahma appears before him. 
Hiranyakasipu, I appreciate your penance. Now, time has come to ask for your boon. What is it that you want? I should never die. I'm sorry, my son. That is not in my hands. Please ask for something else and it shall be granted. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you for something and I'm sure you can do it. I should not die on earth or the sky. During the day or night. I should not die in the hand of living or non-living. I should not die in the hands of man or animal. I should not die inside or outside. Brahmadeva grants the boon. Now Hiranyakasipo returns to his kingdom, stomping his way more powerful than ever. Narada waits for him and hands over his wife and child. Hiranyakasipu thanks Narada and Narada returns. Now Hiranyakasipu goes back to his old ways. He doesn't stop troubling people. But first, he wants to get even with Lord Vishnu. So he stomps his way to Vaiguntam. Lord Vishnu knows that the right time had not yet come to kill Hiranyakasipu. So he disappears. Disappointed, Hiranyakasipu returns. He is very happy to see the child and calls him Prahalad, giver of happiness. This child, which as I told you earlier, had been listening to the praises of Lord Vishnu, had already turned a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. He always spoke about Vishnu. He always prayed to Vishnu. He always uttered the Vishnu mantra. This upset Hiranyakashipu and he was so angry. He said, Please bring Sukaracharya's son, Chanda and Marka here immediately. They were brought and Hiranyakasipu sent little Prahalad with them to be taught all the Vidyas. After a while, Hiranyakasipu calls for Prahalad back and questions him. Now my child, tell me. What is the essence of life? Lord Vishnu replies Prahalad. What? But Hiranyakasipu remains calm. He calls for Chanda and Marka and complains. They go back again to the ashram. After a while, Prahalad is called back. The same thing happens. He cannot change his mind. His heart and soul is so full of Vishnu. He could only talk about him. This angers Hiranyakasipu. He orders the little Prahalad to be slashed. But nothing worries Prahalad. Throw him in the dark room. No, he is not scared. Throw him in the fire. Bhakti protects him. Throw him into the sea. <laughs> Prahalad walks back. Throw him from the mountain. Ah, he lands like a little flower lying in a parachute. Now I think the best would be to crush him by the elephants. But the elephants became meek as little rats. They garlanded Prahalad. No! What is this? Bring the most poisonous snakes! But the snakes 
didn't even hiss. They went away. He was so angry. He said, Take him back again. Chanda and Marka, do something about him. So again, with great fear, they take away Prahalad. But they return and say, Oh, Hiranyakasipu, it's very difficult to teach your son. Moreover, he is influencing everybody there and everybody wants to chant the Vishnu Mantra. Please, it's beyond us. It's beyond our powers. Please forgive us. So he says, so Hiranyakasipu says, Go away, I will handle it myself. And he says, <laughs> You little Prahalat, <laughs> you think Vishnu is great? You told that he's a wonderful person, he's there everywhere, and this and that. <laughs> Do you know Prahalat? <laughs> when I went to Vaikundam, he ran away and hid himself. He's a coward. <laughs> no, no, father, don't say that. I still say that Lord Vishnu is everywhere. Everywhere? Yes, father. <laughs> Even inside this pillar? Yes, father. What do you mean, yes? Think and answer me. Yes, of course, father. He is inside this too. I'm telling you. All right. Bring me the gata. So he takes his gata and gives one heavy blow to the pillar. Rumbling, the pillar opens. Wow! Wow! <gasps> A lion-headed god, Lord Narasimha. He drags Hiranyakasipu to the threshold and lays him on his lap and tears his abdomen with his nails. Everybody is trembling at the sight. But Prahalad remains calm. He knows Mahavishnu has taken this form only to kill the demons. All these sages and all the heavenly lords come down, afraid to approach Lord Narasimha. Lord Brahma pushes Prahala. He goes affectionately towards the fearsome Narasimha. At once, Narasimha turns calm at the sight of Prahala. He lifts him up and lovingly puts him on his lap and asks him, What do you want? And Prahala says, Nothing, my lord. I am blessed to sit on your lap. However, could you please forgive my father? Lord Narasimha smiles and understands and appreciates Prahalad's love and affection. He then makes him the emperor of Hiranyakasipu's kingdom and leaves to Vaikuntha. Do you know how clever Lord Vishnu is? As Hiranyakasipu had asked in his boon to Lord Brahma. He did not die on earth or sky because he was on his lap. He did not die during day or night as it was twilight. He did not die in the hands of living or non-living because Lord Vishnu used his nails. And of course he was not killed by man or animal. He was a 
lion headed god and he died not inside or outside but at the threshold now do you see children how gods come to rescue their devotees isn't that wonderful haven't we learned something nice